I'd like to welcome you to Creating Sacred Space in Our Lives. I am Trip Martin, the pastor of Auburn First Baptist Church in Auburn, Alabama, at the corner of College and Glen. And during this season of Lent, as we have been preparing ourselves for the events of Holy Week, for the shadows of Good Friday, and for the surprise of Easter morning, we have been thinking through the different stories in Scripture that we can place side by side that give us a fuller and deeper understanding of sin, repentance, and grace. Because with a narrow understanding, if we rely just on a single story, and if we read that single story through a narrow lens, it opens the door to shame, that detrimental, quiet, erosive dynamic in our lives, which works against the grace of God. It prevents us from seeing that larger story of God's love where we understand ourselves as children of God. And when shame sneaks into our lives, it can cause us to start blaming others, to perpetuate a cycle of shame, where the harm that shame does to us is then passed on to somebody else. So we are working against the dangers of a single story by lining up a catalog of stories that we find in Scripture that give us a wider and deeper understanding of sin, repentance, and grace. And we've looked at the story of creation and the fall. We've talked about the story of Cain and Abel. We've reflected on the story of David or the story of Job. We talked about different characters, looking at these stories from Abel's point of view or Bathsheba's point of view or Job's point of view. And now we're going to look at several stories in the upcoming weeks from the life of Jesus. That as we look at the stories of Jesus' life, they point us to an understanding of the welcome and embrace of God. Because one aspect of shame is that it can make us feel like we're on the outside, like we have been ostracized or shunned, because shame makes us consumed with worrying about how other people see us, that we can feel rejected. And we long then to feel as if we belong. It is, as Brene Brown writes, belonging is the innate human desire to be part of something larger than us. Because this yearning is so primal, we often try to acquire it by fitting in and by seeking approval, which are not only hollow substitutes for belonging, but often barriers to it. Because true belonging only happens when we present our authentic, imperfect selves to the world. Our sense of belonging can never be greater than our lives of self-acceptance. That first, belonging is not fitting in or seeking approval. We should be able to be different and still belong. We should not have to seek approval by trying to pretend that we agree with everyone else all of the time. That belonging shouldn't be contingent on whether we have a difference of opinion or not. And then second, belonging cannot be greater than self-acceptance. That if belonging is more important then self-acceptance, then belonging can require us to reject ourselves. 
true belonging is about acceptance despite difference or imperfection, which we find in the stories of Jesus and in the welcome of God. There are what is called the Gnostic Gospels. They were written later than Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And one of the Gnostic Gospels is the Gospel of Thomas. It is a fascinating book with many insightful sayings which are attributed to Jesus, and many of them match up with what we find in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But the Gospel of Thomas does not tell the story of Jesus. It is simply a book of sayings. It doesn't talk about his birth or his baptism or his ministry. The first line of the Gospel of Thomas says, These are the secret sayings which the living Jesus spoke, and which Didymus, Judas, Thomas wrote down. And when the church decided which Gospels to canonize or which Gospels to include in the Bible and which ones to leave out, it was not interested in secret sayings. It wanted an embodied story of Jesus, which is what we find in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The story of the Word become flesh, not just secret sayings. Because the Gnostic Gospels resisted anything material like the flesh, anything tangible or material was considered evil. So God was only a spirit that gives us secret knowledge, separate from our experiences in daily life. But belonging can only be experienced in the flesh. And shame is only experienced in the flesh. So we need a story of Jesus that speaks to our experience so that we feel the welcome of God in the flesh. Judith Russell writes, Most of us have a deep sense of wanting to belong and cannot build a proper self-love without the love and support of others. A firm grasp on the fact that God loves us and the depth of that love is a key part of the flourishing life that will feed the other two. That we experience the love of God, the welcome of Jesus, and the love of those around us that helps us deal with the experience of shame and our longing to belong. That it has to be embodied. It has to happen in the flesh, like the Word become flesh. Shame can also distort our trust in others or even our distrust in God that we need to emphasize the part of God's story that is about love, that too often we have talked in such a way that we are not worthy of God's love. But love would never speak that way. We are loved not because we're worthy, but simply because we're loved. And we are created in the image of God, by the love of God, as children of God, that we are loved simply because we are loved, which means we can trust God, knowing that we belong to God. At any time we emphasize that we are not worthy, 
we play into the story of shame and we leave ourselves open to the detrimental work of shame. That we take sin seriously because of the victims who feel shame. That we stand with the weak and the hurting. As Russell writes, a God who is unconcerned about justice or who underestimates the horrific damage that human beings can inflict on one another is no real God. In the stories of Jesus, we meet a God who does not simply love and welcome us, but who also takes sin seriously, both the sins we commit and those committed against us that we take sin seriously, but it doesn't make us unworthy of the love of God. We are loved because we are loved, because God created us with love, because we are children of God. So our emphasis in the story of God needs to always fall on love enabling us to trust God even when we feel shame, even when we feel rejected by others or ostracized, that we might feel God's embrace yet again and know that we belong. There is that image of the tabernacle in the Old Testament, what is called the tent of meeting. And it goes with the people of God throughout the wilderness, wherever they go, reminding them that wherever they are, they can set up the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and God meets them there. That God dwells with us wherever we are. That God does not need a palace. God can be found in a tent wherever we find ourselves. And because God is always with us, it reminds us that we are never isolated or insulated by shame. That God comes to us and embraces us. And it can also help us stand with others who are shamed. Because we feel shame by association, hanging out with the wrong people, rejected by others who judge them and us. But as we look at the welcome of Jesus, we see that he is a friend of tax collectors and sinners, that everyone is welcome in the tent of meeting wherever they are, that God dwells with them. That we do not have to hide from God, that God comes to us and God embraces us when we feel shame. There's this wonderful story that Fred Craddock tells about playing hide-and-go-seek as a child. He had the best hiding place, and he was smaller than his friends, so he could fit into corners and cubbies that no one else could. And there was a place right underneath the stairs of the front porch of his house that no one knew to look. So the person who was it started to count. He ran around. And then when no one was looking, ducked up underneath the stairs. And he heard the person who was it finish counting and start running around and tagging people and finding others. And as time passed, Credit started to worry. What if he was never found? And that sense of loneliness took over. That sense of being ostracized became too much. So he took his hand and he barely stuck it out from underneath the stair. 
Not enough that it was obvious he wanted to be found, but just enough where he would be found. That when we feel shame, it is hard even to just put out a hand, just enough where others can see us and embrace us and remind us that we belong. And we find strength to do so knowing that we belong to God. The image that Scripture uses is that we have been adopted, that we are part of the family of God, that we are loved simply because we are loved. It's not the type of belonging where we have to be perfect, that we're simply God's children. And when we belong, we do not have to feel shame that we know that we do not stand on the outside. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful that wherever we are, you find us, that your dwelling place is with us, even in the wilderness, even when we feel shame. And when we do, help us to step out just enough where others can embrace us as well, or where we can embrace others, reminding each other of your welcome, your love, and your grace in our lives. Amen. If you would like more information about Auburn First Baptist Church, that can be found at auburnfbc.com dot org.